You're watching Acts of the Apostles on Marketplace Network, and I'm Apostle Lady Linda Chapman, and my webpage is prayercoachusa.com. I also have a book that will be published in six to eight weeks that is Be Love, Become the Omnibelevolence of the Trinity, Prayers and Scriptures to Own Our Identity in Christ. It's so important to understand who we really are. Who are we? We're made in God's image. Now, how did we become corrupt? How did that happen? Well, Satan seduced Adam into idolatry by telling him, you'll be like gods. And Eve said, well, I see it as a tree of knowledge that we will learn from it. Well, it was the tree of good and evil. We already had all the goodness in us. We didn't need to know evil, but they didn't know what die meant or evil meant. They were living in luxury, ecstasy, fantastic joy and love permeating their being. This body was just a container for the excellence of the Holy Spirit that dwelled in us. As God created all things, He created the animals and the plants, and then He molded Adam out of the soil of the earth, and then He blew the Holy Spirit energy in him. That's right. And then He took that part of Adam to make Eve. And I said, God, why did you do that? You could have made Adam and Eve the same as you made all the other animals. And you made the plants to have a male and female to make life, to recreate. So why? He said, I took a part of Adam because I took a part of myself to make the Trinity. Mm. To make that, which is the Word, my son, because I know all things. As I've said before in other testimonies that I've given, God knows all things. It doesn't mean he wants it to happen. What he does want to happen is his plan for our lives. That's what he wants. So he takes a portion of himself to create the word of creation. Knowing all things, knowing there's a possibility that Satan could seduce Adam into disobedience. So, he's got that covered. The Word can come down and save us. He had the energy of the Holy Spirit, which creates the Trinity. Father God, Almighty, the wisdom, the brains, the knowledge of all things, and the Word that creates it and the energy that empowers it in creation. And so we were a part of all of that. We were created to be in God's image in the Trinity. Now, 1 John 1, 7 through 9, walk in the light as Christ is in the light. See, we lost our light when Adam failed and disobeyed. And they had to struggle a lot. And can you imagine Adam and Eve having the pureness and the, and the beauty and everything, and then the crushing and the humility of losing it all and learning that nature of evil. And they still didn't know death, but they knew the death of their spirit being. They didn't know the physical death yet, but they knew the death of their communication with God and how it changed them and how they were really kind of stumbling through the land outside of Eden to survive and how that they had to appropriate to make more on the earth, to have more children and to populate the earth. So here we are in Matthew 5, 14, 16. You are the light of the world. See, through Christ, we gain back the essence of being that light, 
having that inner being that focuses on the spirit being inside, not the flesh, that hinders our power in Christ of who we truly are created to be, to own our identity in Christ. So we have a time where I had an experience where I went to Israel in 1983 with my girlfriend Diane and Jared, and she had nine people from all over the United States, from different states, meeting in New York and taking a plane to Israel. And we were on going to tour Israel and all the spots that Jesus walked. And I don't know, the Lord just automatically told me to pray in my prayer language. That when I was, whatever I was doing, to pray in my prayer language. So I would whisper it out when we'd be riding on the buses. I was praying in my prayer language all the time. And we had, you know, we had to bunk together, several girls in a room, and they laughed at me. They said, Linda, you pray in your prayer language at night. <laughs> it's nonstop. I'm going, I guess I'm autopilot with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we had such an anointed time because we were only nine people in a bus of 50 some. And we're watching all these other buses with the people getting off the bus, herding into a group. And then the little speech the guy, the, the, the tourist guy would give, and then they're herding back on. Well, we got to stay longer because we were only nine people. And we had the best time just saturating ourselves in where Jesus walked and what Jesus did in the tomb and, the, and, and where all of the sights of Jesus in the River Jordan and just amazing. We even went up to Kafar Galardi at Kibbutz on the corner of Lebanon in Israel. And what an experience that was. On a kibbutz, I got a cross similar to this cross that I have. This is a cross that shows the Jewish star and the cross inside. Now, the one I got in Israel didn't have the heart, but it had the Jewish cross, the Jewish star with the cross inside. And I just got it. It was at an Israeli kibbutz in Israel. Now, when I got this cross, this has a real meaning to me because the heart of God, the omnibenevolence of the Trinity is the pure love that is the energy and life of God. Mm. That pure love, that he loves us so much, that knowing all things in advance, that he knew the possibility of Satan tempting Adam and changing the world that he wanted it to be in the perfect sense of the royalty and majesty of the heavens coming to earth on earth as it is in heaven. Mm. And that's in Matthew 6, 9 through 13 in the Lord's Prayer. It is on earth as it is in heaven. We have the right to bring those heavenly things down. Mm. If you believe in Jesus and you trust in knocking out those natures of the flesh, telling them to get out, and rising up in your spirit being, then the flesh no longer controls you, but the spirit being inside does. So we have this pure heart of the love of God that created the Jewish nation, that then he sent the Son, the cross, to give us our salvation, redemption, recreation, renewal into what? we are created to be, and the empowerment to survive in this world we live in, with Satan still attacking us. Second Peter 1, 3 through 11, seeing his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. He has given us that light pertaining to everything 
to His Majesty granting us everything through the true knowledge of Him. We have to have the knowledge of Christ to know who we are in Christ. What mm. did Christ do? How did He behave on earth? How did He interact with people? And we are to become that. We're to become that essence of that love that God has for us and that tenderness. Now, while I was praying in my prayer language all the time for the, I don't know, two weeks we were there, maybe 10 days, two weeks, it was 1983. Mm -hmm. um, when we left and the next day I was in Rome and my friends left and I said, I'm gonna take myself through Europe all by myself. I'm gonna travel through Europe. And I didn't even have a time frame when I was gonna come home. But that day, as I walked around, people would come up to me and they'd speak in English and say, you have light sparks shooting out of your eyes. And my friend who owned a modeling agency in Rome, said, Linda, come out with us tonight. We'll go to the disco Jackio's. This after Jackie Onassis, very popular in 1983. So I went, and his young models, they're in their 20s. I was in my 30s. And they would look at me and say, how do you get those light sparks shooting out of your eyes? They just pew, 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 pew. It's like you see this light just sparking out of your eyes. How do you do that? And I would just say, you know, I spent a lot of time in prayer recently and with the Holy Spirit. So we are spirit beings first and foremost. And at the time, I didn't really know all the scriptures. As I've said in many ministry testimonies before, when you're young, you don't know all the scriptures. But... When you do learn them, you find, kind of go retro backtrack and you know, whoa, that's what happened to me. I am the light of the world. You spend time with the Lord. He manifests his ways in many different ways where you become radiance. You become that shining light in that dark room. You become energy that people want to be near you because you have an energy. We are electric beings. We are chemical beings. We are not just flesh and bones and, you know, a spirit being, of course, but we have electricity and chemistry that phew, out of us. And, and that is part of being created in the image of God because it is through that energy that we have the inventions of the world. Everything that is out there in the world today that people are creating, it is first and foremost in the thought and mind of God. There's nothing that be created in this earth that doesn't come from God first. He is the art of creation. And that's why he wants us to be creative and to develop in that sense of doing things that haven't been done before, refining things that have been done, perfecting things that are old, that are still valuable, perfecting them to be in existence still. Now, we have many, many people that are considered geniuses and scholars. Well, my father had a ninth grade education and he was a genius. He was an inventor. He was uh, invented many items. And then when he would go to the patent office, they would say, do you have a drawing that made this? He said, no, I created it from my mind and my two hands. And then he'd have to go back and have somebody do the drawings mm -hmm. after the fact to put it in a patent. So we get our gifts from God. Even the pagan gets their gifts from God because God instilled in us certain things 
from conception of time. Now his hope and his desire is that you fellowship with him to care about how to perfect them so they don't harm the world. Satan works on us being a vessel where he taints and hinders the creation of God so that a lot of things that are first created can harm the world. So when you think of science and how they learn certain chemicals and certain things from the plants mm -hmm. of the earth that God first created, they take and extract certain things out of them and they think, well, this is what is healing. This is what will do this. This is what will do that. And they don't know the unknown, and that's why they're side effects. Because the wholeness in God is not just what is known, because that's what somebody finally discovered, because he wants us to discover things. He wants us to have that delight in learning and creating because we're made in his image. He's a creative force, and he wants us to create. Even the accountant is creating. People say, well, accounting is kind of a boring job, but no, they're creating. They're creating numbers, and generations of numbers, and helping us get by in business. So everything that is in the earth is from creation. And they say necessity is the mother of invention. And this is so true that when we think back of how things developed from the time of Adam and Eve being cast out of that beautiful garden of Eden and in the world and having to survive and how they had to learn how to do things to survive, they had to create curiosity is a key factor because you have mm. to be curious to be able to think about what can I do, you know, to resolve this. So people have to understand that creation is perpetual mm. and that heaven is perpetually creating. It is a perpetual existence of a universe of creation. There are certain stabilities and foundations, the laws, that you can't go outside those because it's the, the law of gravity, you know. But yet, we went above the law of gravity and went to the moon. Mm. Um, there are certain laws that you can't violate. And those are the laws of God, the laws of consequence. So it is not God who punishes, but it is the resolve that God uses to say, if you do this, you're going to get a bad consequence because you chose it, free will. He doesn't want puppets. He doesn't want to manipulate people. He wants to inspire people. Mm. He has given those gifts, mm. that seed, that mustard seed, that's just a tiny little seed, that when it's watered and nurtured and fed, fed the Word of God, it grows into this huge 30-foot tree, that mustard seed does, a fruitful tree mm -hmm. that gives the spice of life. Well, God wants us to have the spice of life into the gifts he's given us. And how do we mature those gifts? We feed it the word of God. You have to feed it the word of God. And know and trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your being. So when I was speaking to those girls in that nightclub and sharing with it and for they were amazed. So I'm thinking that they started to pray. I'm thinking that they started to. How many times in my life have I overheard people talking to other people about me and say, why, why do you like her? Or she sparkles or she signs. She's got a radiance about her. And I'm kind of overhearing this. And then all of a sudden, that person that was speaking to the person that was asking, why do you like her? They started to care about God. They started to care about 
learning about what our gifts were mm. and how we can be radiance in the world, how we can be kindness. And it says in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, don't give insult for insult or what evil for evil, but give a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you would inherit a blessing. Now this is a main theme. Now listen to this and get it because it's a main theme of the ministry that the Lord has given me. When you die to the flesh in Philippians 121, you die to all those natures of hatred, anger, envy, greed, jealousy, all the things that hurt us, insecurity, um, all those things that depression, sadness, um, things of the flesh that try to hinder us, you die to that, that you gain in Christ. And this is the key ingredient. You gain a divine, supernatural wisdom, the wisdom of Solomon, the wisdom to know. God will give you information that you didn't learn from a book, but it will be right on. You will be right in saying it. And you know you didn't learn it from anything but the Lord. Supernatural divine wisdom. We have a true fellowship. When you come together with believers who really truly believe and they want to have that, that wonderful love of God in their hearts, that is a true fellowship with the brethren and with God. Very key thing, the true fellowship with God Almighty, the Trinity. And then you have anointed worship. When you worship, there's, there's a worship that fills you with an energy, an energy that is just so pure. Now, again, I'll say Cheryl Salem taught me the tones of the throne room, and I will quote her and give her ministry kudos many times when I'm speaking because that tones of the throne room, get her book, I constantly say it, it's such a treat to be able to have a tone come in you and out of you that is holy and from heaven. It's amazing and it gives you energy and it gives you radiance and it gives you that light that you can make a difference in the world. And then you have pure righteousness. Again, my theme is, for the ministry the Lord's given me, is that that pure righteousness, no matter what you've done in life, don't let Satan rob you of your pure righteousness because we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are that righteousness that has power and might, and it gives us the ability to discern and have perception in a higher level than ever known before when you have that, when you trust in that, when you own your identity in Christ. You know you're a saint in Christ. You're not an angel. Angels are beneath you. Satan is an angel. He wants to be a saint, and he can't. Never can he be a saint because he's not born in the image of God. He was created by God, not born in the image of God. Now we go to the real treat of life, is you get the real empowerment of the divine Holy Spirit energy, authority, anointing that is the power over all evil in any circumstance in life. So I call forth to say, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the world and the New Age movement has hindered you because your ego wants to do what you want to do and no one's going to tell you what to do, it is your flesh thwarting you, denying you of your real power and the real things that can take you to prosperity and success. It's powerful, it's real. I live it, I haven't always lived it,
because I didn't know it. I had that ego that no one's going to tell me what to do. And then, boy, did Satan fill my mind full of things that was destroying my life and taking me down a bad path. So I know the difference. And you can know the difference, too. Receive Jesus Christ in your life. John 3, 16, if you believe in Jesus and the works he's done and know that he died and rose again, then you are saved. Ask forgiveness of your sins. You know, it's easy to ask forgiveness on a blanket sin, but try and own what they were. Try to identify them and say, oh my gosh, that was bad of me. Forgive me, Jesus. It may be a long list, but it's worth going through. Because when you do, you are truly asking forgiveness because you recognize where your errors were. And once you recognize where those error, errors are in your life, Satan can't come in and fool you again. He can't tempt you to have an ego or jealousy or envying or spitefulness. He can't do it. So trust in that and receive Jesus Christ and grow, grow into owning your identity in Christ and becoming the omnibenevolence of the Trinity. Be love. Wow, wasn't that powerful, what the Apostle said? I, I was very impressed with how she walked us down the road of righteousness, and the things that she said really touched me. So I want to give you a chance to not only get her book in the next six to eight weeks, uh, all those prayers, all, those, uh, all that knowledge, all the things she talked about on today's program will be right in the book. And it even goes deeper. So you, you don't want to, when the book comes out in the next six to eight weeks, I encourage you to get that. Where do you get it? On the website, I'll keep you involved, right here on the bottom of the screen, where it's coming out, how you can get it. It'll be on all the major networks, Barnes & Nobles, Amazon, it's in 40,000 retailers, so it won't be hard for you to get. But I want to ask you to do me a favor. She does travel a long way to be with us, and she does the message for you. It's not for her, she's already, got uh, some of the knowledge God has, uh, she learns every day, she talks about, she reads her word every day, she prays every day, but she does it for you, because we're in hard times. And if we're in hard times, we need to know how to learn how to live like God. That's what this is all about. He has his book, it's a guide for us to learn on how to walk it out. I mean, we can do our own thing, but have we lived forever? No. I mean, they say every, after every 100 years, the knowledge grows, doubles and triples and so on. Can you imagine back in the days of Adam and Noah and all them that lived for so long? Can you imagine the knowledge they had? Well, God has that a million times over because he knows all things. But I know this, if you'll sow a seed, if you're struggling with finances, I know a lot of us in the ministry, a lot of us that are going through the tough times that we're going through today, we need a breakthrough. So in God's economy, it's sowing and reaping. So I'm asking you, her Zell number is right there on the bottom. Why don't you not only help yourself, but co-labor with her. If she's speaking around the country and all over the world, she speaks to hundreds of thousands of people on these broadcasts. Don't you want to sow into that kind of anointing to get people saved, healed, and delivered? I know we get a lot of comments on people getting saved. A lot of people comment they got healed. A lot of people have gotten delivered. But it's your turn now to co-labor with her. If you'll plant the seed, if it's $10, 25 50 make it a seed monthly. God loves a cheerful giver and someone that will give consistently. Now, I know some of you out there are business people can do 100 500 or 1000 Make sure, don't think about it. Do it from the heart. That's where it's from. You watch, if you sow the seed, maybe it's a one-time seed at 5000 10,000, doesn't matter. But watch what God will do for you. I know a lot of us are struggling, but if you'll manage to make that 10, 25, $50, I'm telling you right now, you'll see a huge difference in what God's doing for you. 
things won't cost as much. Things will last longer. You'll get checks in the mail. You've got to raise. Things will start to turn around. But you have to be consistent. But more importantly, you have to believe God. See, he's the provider, not us. So that's how we turn things around. Till next week, you'll see the apostle come back on Acts of Apostles. I'm Dr. Ken. I'll see you next week on Acts of Apostles.